Praise the Lord, everybody. We certainly do give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, and his mercy endureth forever. I want to welcome you once again to another Bible study uh, here at Christian Ministries at the Apostolic Faith Church, where I am the lead pastor, Suffolk and Bishop-elect Pastor Frankie L. Quinn. And we certainly do thank and praise the Lord for our lovely wife, Lady Tracy Quinn, and we uh, also give thanks unto the Lord for all of our leadership, uh, our deacons, and also our administrative staff that help work together to put, uh, keep this church going and keep it functioning in the name of the Lord Jesus. Uh, we certainly do thank and praise the Lord for uh, all that he is doing in our lives. Uh, truly, if it had not been for the Lord on our side, uh, there's no telling where we would be. And we certainly do thank and praise the Lord for his greatness and his goodness and his mercy that he has shown toward us down through the years. Uh, there's one thing that I do know about the Lord. He's righteous and he's holy. Uh, he's just and he's fair. He's long-suffering. And I thank God for that because it helps to control his grace and his mercy and his love that he sheds upon us even when we uh, fall short uh, God is still there to help us in our time of need the Bible says it's not God's will that any should perish but that all should come to repentance and God gives each and every one of us an opportunity to turn to him to trust in him and I certainly do thank and praise the Lord for that because God knows uh, down through the years I needed that uh, in my life to help me to be the person that I am today. God gives opportunity uh, to help us to be the people that we are striving to be. I'm certainly not where I'm not where I want to be, but I'm certainly not where I used to be. So we want to go before the Lord in prayer uh, here at Christian Ministries. Uh, we want to pray for uh, men and women and children everywhere that the Lord himself will continue to save and add to the church daily such as should be saved uh, pray for our vision our vision is to be a caring church leading souls to christ strengthening members and families making disciples equipping them for service and community ministry pray for our purpose our purpose is to promote the gospel of jesus christ through effective responsible ministry uh, and intentional, creative, dynamic fellowship. Uh, pray uh, that the Lord will help us to accomplish our core values that will keep them uh, near and dear to us in our heart. And that is that uh, we value love, we value commitment, patience, sacrifice, uh, we value service, and we value uh, commitment above all and we want to pray for each and every one of us that we will uh, be committed, that we will be persistent, that we will practice patience, and that we will serve one another through the sacrifice that Christ has given unto us. So let us pray. Gracious Father, in the name of Jesus, we, Lord, we certainly do thank you here on today as we delve into our Bible study. We want you to remember men and women and children everywhere Lord, you save and add to the church daily such as should be saved. In times like these, Lord, send us encouragement and strength. Help us to be with one accord, operating in unity and in love. And Lord, we ask you, Lord, that you grant the door of utterance and empower the hearers and the doers of your word. Father, we thank you and praise you, give you glory and honor. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Thank you, Lord. And we certainly, like I said before, we do thank God for all of his mercifulness, all of his love and kindness that he has shown toward us. And today we have a, a certainly a dynamic Bible study on tonight. Uh, if you've been following me, I've been preaching uh, and talking about the Spirit, uh, the Holy Ghost, the anointing of God. And uh, today I want you to uh, go with me um, in in-depth kind of study on tonight uh, about 
the spirit, the spirit, how it gives us gifts and how it literally enables us to carry out our service one to another. And um, I want you to turn with me to the book of First Corinthians uh, chapter number 12. First Corinthians uh, chapter number 12. And our study tonight will be dealing with one body with many members. One body with many members. And tonight's study is really uh, coming from a standpoint wherein uh, the Lord has literally given us gifts. He has placed in us uh, uh, treasures and earthen vessels. And also he has given us assignments. And uh, when we embrace our gifts and when we embrace our assignments, then we're able to function and operate in the body of Christ according to his design, according to his purpose, according to his will. If you study the Bible, especially the New Testament, you'll see in it that it talks about according to the will of God, according to as he has purposed in us, in Christ Jesus. And that's very important language. That's very important language because it deals with how we ought to, as individuals, operate in the body of Christ. And it's very necessary, as you, we will delve into, uh, for you to understand this as we delve into our scriptures on tonight. So in the book of uh, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter number 12, and I want to begin reading at verse number 7. And in this particular uh, chapter, the beginning of the chapter, Paul is talking about how the Spirit gives gifts. And um, gives gifts, meaning when he's talking about the Spirit giving gifts, he's talking about special endowment or empowerment to carry out the service of God, to carry out the will of God. So uh, in verse number 7, it says, but the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. In other words, it's saying that the, the, the gifts that God gives everyone through the Spirit, through the Holy Ghost, through the anointing, it is given so that everybody could profit, so that everybody could benefit. The gifts that God has given unto me uh, he's given me gifts so that everybody uh, who I come in contact with would profit from the gift. The gift that God has given you is not for yourself, but is to benefit those who, in whom you come in contact with. And that's, that's vital. That's very important. Because when we look at uh, even the fivefold ministry, uh, the fivefold ministry consists of, uh, he gave some apostles, he gave some uh, prophets, he gave some evangelists, he gave some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Every gift that God gives and every special endowment that he gives, he gives it to uh, us to benefit others, to help others, to encourage others, to strengthen others, not to, not to, uh, to rule over others, not to uh, put our foot or our, 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 excuse the phrasing, our foot on people's neck, but he has given us gifts not to hold people down, but he has given us gifts to build people up. If your ministry or if your assignment in God or if your, uh, the way you operate in the body of Christ is not uplifting, if, if it's not encouraging, now surely you can warn, you can advise, you can correct, but that's still in the vein of correct, that's still in the vein of encouragement, of, of lifting up or to working together. Uh, and that's why it's important for us to understand 
our assignments. And I want to say this as well, is that um, when, uh, if a person's participation uh, in the body of Christ is restricted, if a person's partici participation in the body of Christ is restricted, then those gifts that uh, God has given would be lost. Why? Because they're not being used. In other words, um, uh, we come from churches uh, wherein the pastor does everything. Um, and that shouldn't be, or a, just a small group of people do everything. And that's not the order or the structure of God. God has not uh, put people, uh, got a body, or put people together where only a few operate. That's not God. God has given everybody a gift uh, so that everybody would operate in the body of Christ. Everybody, everybody, from the youngest to the oldest, the middle age, everybody has an assignment in the body of Christ. Not just a few, not just the pastor, uh, not, not just a select few people are, are, are endowed with gifts to operate in the body of Christ. That's not scriptural, that's not doctrinal. The, the scriptural way is, is that God has given everybody, uh, everybody a gift. God has given everybody an assignment, an assignment to profit with all so that everybody can profit. All right, amen. So I want to establish that. And I want, I want you to understand, my uh, audience tonight, that, that, that God has, has given you something. Uh, God has, has put you into the body of Christ and he has given you something so that you have value, so that you are able to contribute to the benefit of all. Hallelujah, my God, my God. And, and don't allow circumstances, don't, I'm, I'm getting ready to go into my preaching mode now. <laughs> but don't allow circumstances or conditions or situations uh, to stop you from uh, operating in the gift and the calling that God has given you. Don't allow uh, no thing, no one, no spirit, uh, and even yourself, your thoughts, uh, to, to, to cause you to think that you're disqualified from operating in the position where have God have called you. Notice what the scripture says, that you are his workmanship. We are his workmanship created or designed in Christ Jesus, prepared unto good works. So we, we, are, we have been designed, we have been put into the body of Christ to carry out good works. We have value, you have value, and you ought to utilize your gifts and your callings to the glory of God, amen. So um, delving into our scriptures on today, um, um, I want you to see here in verse number seven, where it says, but the manifestation, the spirit is made known, it is given to every man to profit with all. So God has put earth gifts in you. God through the spirit has anointed you so that you could utilize your gift and your calling to benefit the body of Christ. Amen. So notice what it says. For, uh, for one is given the spirit of the word of wisdom, to another the spirit of the word of knowledge, uh, by the same spirit, to every, to another uh, faith, by the same spirit, to another gifts of healing, by the same spirit, to another uh, the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another uh, diversity, diverse kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. Now, now, I read those verses so that you could see that there are different types of operations uh, of the spirit 
that is given to different people for the benefit of the body of Christ. Uh, not everybody has the same gifts. Not everybody has the same callings. But I want you to understand tonight that you have a gift, that you have a calling, and you ought to utilize your gifts and your callings to benefit the body of Christ, to benefit the work of the ministry, to benefit your brothers and your sisters. Amen? So we see here then, verse number 11, we're in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter number 12, verse number 11, but it says this. He says, uh, 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 verse number, uh, chapter 12, verse 11, it says, but all these worketh that one and self same spirit dividing to every man as he will. Now, this is key. Thank you, Lord, that um, the, it, is, it is the spirit of God that uh, empowers the individual uh, with these gifts. And the spirit, it determines what gift you shall have. I don't determine what gift I shall have. You don't determine what gifts you shall have, but it's the Spirit, it's the Holy Ghost. It determines what spirit you shall have. And, and I want you to drop down with me, uh, we're gonna go back up, but I want you to drop down with me to verse number 18, because I wanna, I wanna hit a critical point. Uh, verse number 18 says, but now God have set the members, every one of them, in the body as it has pleased him. So, so it is God that puts you into the body that, that, uh, uh, and, and gives you your assignment. But it is the spirit that, that determines what gifts that you shall need to carry out your assignment. So uh, it's a working together. Uh, if we were to go to 1 John chapter number 5, um, um, uh, it would tell you that, uh, that there are three that give record in heaven. Uh, and those three are, is, the, is God, the, well it says the Father, the Word, and the Spirit. And then it says, and these three are one. Uh, the, the Word, the Father, and the Spirit, they all operate as one, and they carry out the assignment that, that is necessary for us to be successful. So, uh, in other words, if you catch what I'm saying, it's the Spirit that empowers you, but it is God that, 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 that calls out your assignment, that, that puts you in the body as it has pleased him. So it is God that calls pastors, or, or, and I'm just using myself as a pastor. It is God that called me as a pastor. He preordained me. He, he, he foreknew me. <laughs> Hallelujah. But it, is, but it is the Spirit, thank you, Lord, when I receive the Spirit, it then gives me the gifts. <laughs> Hallelujah. So I can be the best pastor that God has called me to be. It endows me with grace. It endows me with knowledge and wisdom and understanding. It gives me the, the caring uh, nature and the divine spirit where in which I can carry out the task. And, and he does that across the board. Thank you, Lord. It is the spirit of God. Hallelujah. It, uh, that determines, the Holy Ghost determines what you need to carry out the assignment that God has given you. And they all work together. Hallelujah. They work together. Christ works together. The Father, the Son, hallelujah, and the Holy Ghost. They all work together so that we can be successful in carrying out our mission. So uh, why are you saying all that, Brother Pastor? I'm saying all that so that, so that we know that we have help. Uh, that we are not alone, that, that, that Jesus, he never failed in his assignment so that we would not fail in the assignment that God has given us. Hallelujah. So, 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 so 
You should be confident. That's why the scripture says, be steadfast and unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain. Hallelujah. When you, when you uh, realize that you've been endowed uh, with unalienable rights, because the Bible says that the gifts and the callings of God are without repentance. And now let me, let me explain that just for a moment. That, that the, what God has called you to do and the gifts that he gives you, uh, the favor, all of his promises are without repentance. It doesn't talk about uh, um, uh, what that not repentance mean is, is that God will not turn from his promises. God will not turn and, and, and say, well, forget uh, what I promised, forget what I said, I'm changing my mind. No, that's not, that's not what, uh, uh, what God will do. What that word means is, is that God has equipped you. He has promised to never leave you. He has promised that, that if you do certain things, he will uh, 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 do certain things for you. And, and these gifts and his favor and his, and his love and his mercy, everything, everything that entails God, uh, God says that I shall be faithful. <laughs> hey, hallelujah, that I will always perform my duties toward you. Thank you, Lord. I will always carry out my promises toward you. Thank you, Lord. And it comes without repentance, meaning that God will never change from that. Uh, he, will, he will always accomplish what he has set out to do uh, for you concerning his will. And, and that's beautiful because God gives us all of these inalienable rights. Thank you, Lord, that cannot be taken away. No matter uh, what you go through, God will remain faithful. But no matter uh, what happens and you try to carry out and walk out the assignment, God will be with you to ensure that you will be successful. Hallelujah. I want you to get that in your mind. Thank you, Lord, that you can do all things through Christ that strengthens you. And that all things through Christ that strengthens you is according to the will of God. Hallelujah, my God. That's what that all things means. It's, it's according to God's will, according to God's purpose, you shall accomplish what he has put in you to do. My God. Now, if God has not called me to fly an airplane and, and I don't get it, that means that God has not called me to do that. If, 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 I, if, I, if I'm trying to be a medical doctor and I can't get it together, God called me to do that. If, if God, hallelujah, if God has, has not called me, as I was saying, to be a medical doctor and, and I don't get and understand how to be a physician, even though I may desire that myself, but if that's not God's calling, if that's not God's purpose, hallelujah, for me, thank you, Lord, he has not failed in his assignment in that word. But everything that God has told me or desired me to do, it shall be accomplished according to the will of God. And he will give you everything you need in order to accomplish it. Hallelujah. In order to perform it. So if God is you can be the usher. Hallelujah. On this earth. God is called this path upon if God to be a on and on these assignments. Thank you. Prophecy. Thank you, Lord. Healing. And can he thank you will success I'll tonight uh, yeah. hallelujah and be success hey. Hey. now um, let's let verse number three and four
Chapter 12, I want to read number 12. Now, now before that, body is one that many people call body, body, many, many, also, that, that the scripture Paul uses a lot of for God to help understand the word to well, I'm gonna be in the men of tells us that it is cornerstone and part building upon that mission. Apostles receiving our what your thing styles in the Bible. He told us as family. Uh, that's where you get the scriptures where it talks about God being your father and uh, we being brothers and sisters. Um, and also, uh, we also being children of God. Um, uh, uh, then we also have mothers and, and fathers, it talks about in the scripture. And that, and that talks about our relationship. And our relationship one to another ought to be based on love. A strong family loves one another. Uh, a strong family, I'm going to say that again, loves one another unconditionally. So uh, we as the body of Christ, we ought to love one another unconditionally. And that's where he picks up on that thought uh, in, in, in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, where we call it the love chapter. And you know it, it says, uh, love beareth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things. Uh, uh, whether there be prophecy, uh, it shall fail. Uh, the, uh, the, there now abideth faith, hope, and charity. The greatest of these three is charity. Everything that we do in the body of Christ has to be motivated by love. Everything that we do concerning the body of Christ has to be motivated by love. And Paul uh, is, is saying that, saying that I'm going to show you uh, a, a more excellent way. And that more excellent way is being motivated by love. Now, um, now the, the, the other means which we're going to talk about tonight is that he also styles us as a body. Amen? As a body. Uh, and we are uh, literally part of the body of Christ. And I love how he breaks it out. Uh, uh, Christ is the body. And we are members, the scripture says, in particular, that make up the body of Christ. Which Jesus Christ, and you know it in the scriptures, we don't have to go to those scriptures, but he is the head of the body. In other words, he is in control. He is in control. He is the head of the body. And I'm so glad that we've got a, a savior such as Jesus as being the head of the body or the head of the church. Hallelujah. He's the head of the body. So therefore, we are the members of the body. Thank you, Lord. I got You can see my head, but then you can also see my members. I got different members of the body. My hands, my arms, my chest, my nose, my mouth. Those are different members that make up the body. So, and I know this is a simplistic message, but, the, uh, uh, but I think because it's simplistic, we miss out on the dynamic nature of it. Hallelujah. And the dynamic nature of it, it, it resides in unity. When the body is operating together the way it should operate, it brings unity. Thank you, Lord. And, and the body 
is, is designed to serve each member. My God, everything on your body is, is designed to serve and it has a purpose. My God, everything on your body, if you think of everything on your body or anything in your body, it has a purpose and its purpose is to serve. Notice what I'm saying. Its purpose is to serve other members of the body. Now, if we can bring that to a spiritual nature, that, that we are part of the body of Christ and our, our members or everybody's assignment is to serve one another. My God, if you, if you, if you catch what I'm saying, my Lord, uh, if you understand what I'm saying, that the vital role that, that you have in the body of Christ is to serve your fellow brother and your sister, uh, and which is in turn to also carry out the mission, the plan of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. My God. Let us let that set in for a moment. My Lord. Let us let us set that set in for a moment. That think of any part of your body. Every part of your body serves a function. Everybody in the body of Christ serves a function. And every member of your body serves other members of your body. Uh, they're interconnected, they're interrelated, and they are a part of each other. Everybody that is in the body of Christ is interrelated. Thank you, Lord, are, are connected. Thank you, Lord, and therefore ought to serve and help one another. There's no, no, my hand, my hand doesn't tell this hand, I don't love you. I hate you. Uh, I, I'm not going to help or support you. Thank you, Lord. We ought not tell our brothers and our sisters that I hate you. Uh, I'm not going to support you. If, if that happens, you know that that is not the intent of the body. That is not the intent of the body. That is not the intent of the body. Because the intent of the body, every part of the body, is to serve and to help every other member of the body to carry out its function. Amen? Hallelujah, my God. I don't think I can beat that anymore. Hallelujah, my God. Thank you, Jesus. Now, let us move on. I'm going to move on. Notice what it said. It says, uh, verse number 13, um, for by one spirit are we all baptized into one body. Notice what that said. By one spirit are we all baptized into one body. Meaning that uh, through the spirit of the Holy Ghost, through the spirit of baptism in Jesus' name, we have all become one. Amen? Into one body, into one fellowship, one Lord, one faith, one baptism. Hallelujah. We are all one in Christ. Amen. So therefore, we are, are united in him. Um, notice uh, uh, what he says. He says, um, uh, well, earlier he's talking about, uh, which probably would have been, uh, uh, how can I say, blasphemy uh, for some of those brethren that heard Paul speak talking about oneness. Uh, when you look at, when you look at uh, uh, Jews and, and slaves and, and Gentiles, uh, people on different classes, people coming from different backgrounds, and Paul saying uh, uh, people that sometimes have different prejudices and, 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 and different experiences, uh, Paul saying that we are all one. We are all one in the body. Thank you, Lord, that we uh, should lay aside, uh, uh, not ne necessarily lay aside all your differences because diversity is of God. That's why you got different races. That's why you got different people, different cultures. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. So, so, but, but we should 
uh, not allow our differences to keep us separate if we're one. We should not allow our differences to keep us separate if we are one. And what keeps us not from being separate is love. Hallelujah. My God, I got to love you. I got to appreciate you and not be jealous of what God has given you for the benefit of me. Thank you, Lord. That's, that's foolish. Hallelujah. For my left hand uh, uh, to be jealous of my right hand. Now, I'm right-handed, and I, and, I, and, and I use my right hand uh, uh, more than I do my left hand. Uh, uh, so, but my, my left hand, I don't feel jealousy. It doesn't feel envy and jealousy. Thank you, Lord, because the one is being used more than the other because it has its part to play. Uh, hallelujah. It supports the other. And we've got to come to that realization, my God, that, that, that though our members and our bodies, uh, uh, some are going to be more used than others, but, but don't allow that to cause division. Don't allow that to cause schism in the body. Now, I want to say this. Hallelujah, that, that my ear, my ear has a specific function. Thank you, Lord. It doesn't have multiple functions, if you allow me to say it. Now, my inner ear, uh, it has a function to help keep me balanced so I can hear sound and things like that. But my outer ear, its function is to allow me to hear. Thank you, Lord. But my hands, it has multiple functions. It, it does multiple things. Thank you, Lord. And, and, and therefore, you don't see my ear getting jealous with my hands because it has multiple functions and the ear has one function. Uh, in other words, we ought to carry out our one function to the glory of God. If God has given you one purpose, do that one purpose to the glory of God. If God has given you many purposes, give that give your all to the glory of God. Now, I want to say this, that 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 uh my hands it can't hear. So so uh my uh, I can't expect my hands to carry out the function of my ears. Now, uh you can't expect uh one person to do everything. If uh if you if one person did everything, he, that person would be overcompensating and they would wear themselves out. Thank you, Lord. You can't expect that. That's not fair to the rest of the body. The body is trying to survive. The body is trying to thrive. So it's going to take up the slack. Thank you, Lord. But, but in taking up the slack, if that other part isn't doing its job, if that other part isn't doing what it's been called to do, it causes a problem. Thank you, Lord. We ought to want to carry out our assignment to benefit the whole body so that there won't be problems, so that there would be unity. Now, I want to say this, my God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. And I want you to hear me. That... Uh, uh, my daughter, uh, Shalanda, she was, she was sick. Thank you, Lord. And y'all know that she has gone on. Thank you, Lord. Uh, but she was sick and she was in the hospital. And then when she was sick and in the hospital, uh, uh, various uh, organs of her body was shutting down. And uh, the doctor uh, was explaining that to us. And I thank God for those doctors. Oh, those doctors that, that we had were very knowledgeable and they took time out to, uh, to, to, to comfort us and to give us information and to share with us what was going on. But my point is this, is that uh, they were saying that, you know, uh, because of her condition, diabetes, it affected her heart. And because her heart was affected, her lungs were affected. And because her heart was affected, her kidneys was affected. And, and they, were, they were going on, and her veins were affected. You know, so it was, it was uh, my point is this, is that 
those organs are organs in the body. They depend on one another in order to operate. And same way is the body of Christ. In the body of Christ, we depend on one another to operate. And if, and if one doesn't function the way that it ought to function, uh, then you're going to have overcompensation uh, or you're going to have failure. My God, you're going to have uh, 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 untimely death. My God. So, so that's why, my brothers and sisters, we have to really get this message on today. It sounds very simple, but, but the simplicity, uh, uh, the, let me say it this way, the, the, the deepness is lost in the simplicity if you don't expand your mind, if you don't understand what the Lord is saying, that, that we are workers together, that we ought to uh, uh, edify and serve one another. And that's what ministry is about, serving one another, building up one another, encouraging one another. My God, and that should be our focus. That should be our, uh, our, our, our primary thought pattern in our mind to carry out the mission and the plan of Jesus Christ. Yeah, hallelujah. Let, let me move on. Thank you, Jesus. Now, uh, verse, verse, let me go to verse 13. Notice what it says. It says, for by one spirit, all were baptized into one body. Whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, or, and, have, and have all been made to drink, of that one spirit. And that's what I was saying earlier. Thank you, Lord, today that Paul, when uh, he made these statements, it probably raised some eyebrows uh, because, you know, sometimes people think I'm better than you. My class, I'm, I'm in a different class than you are. <laughs> but if you're in, in the body of Christ, we're all one. Thank you, Lord. It doesn't matter who you are. Uh, the scripture says, there's neither male nor female, hallelujah, in the body of Christ. That's how one we are. We are of one spirit. We are of one Lord. And we all been baptized into this one body. My God, my Lord. And, that, and that's how you get unity. You get unity when everyone knows that they are one and they operate as one. My body, thank you, Lord, it doesn't... Uh, the members of my body, they don't argue and fight with one another. My, the members of my body, they serve one another. The members of your body, they don't fight and argue with one another. They serve one another. And, and that's what the mindset that we got to be in. We've got to be in the mindset that I am here to serve. I is my strength. So we've got to we got to carry out that plan and that purpose. Amen. Now notice, notice what it says. Thank you, Jesus. It says, uh, verse fourteen: For uh, the body is is one member. Uh, the body is not one member, but many. The body is not one member, but many members. Notice what he says. I like it. He says, verse 15, he says, If the foot shall say, because I am not the hand, am I not the body? Is it therefore not of the body? And if the ear say, shall say, because I am not the eye, am I not uh, of the body? Is therefore it is not of the body? Notice verse 17. If the whole body were an eye, where would the hearing? If the whole body were hearing, where would the smelling? My God, we've, we've got to come to a realization that, that the Holy Ghost has equipped us and God has put us in the body as it has pleased him. And wherever God has put you, he's already designed you for that function 
and for that purpose. And the Holy Ghost uh, equips you. It gives you what you need to carry out that purpose and that function. So I shouldn't, if, if God has called me to be an usher, then I shouldn't be trying to be a preacher. <laughs> My God, it's out of order. Thank you, Lord. Uh, because uh, where, where would you have pre-ushers? If, 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 if the ushers wanted to be a preacher, you wouldn't have ushers. So that's what Paul is saying. He's saying that God has literally put us in the body as he has, it has pleased him. And therefore, we ought to carry out the assignment uh, that God has given us. Now notice, I'm going to say this. Let us move on. Notice then. Verse 18, it said, But now hath God set the members, every one of them, in the body as it has pleased him. God has put us in the body. We ought to be thankful that, that God has given us an assignment, that God has equipped us. Thank you, Lord. And my assignment that he has given unto me is to carry out service to the body of Christ. My God, that's huge. Hallelujah, that's huge. Thank you, Lord, because it helps every member helps the whole body it, to carry out its function. Now notice, I want to say this, that, that, that ministry is a, a contribution of, 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 of good works. Ministry is a contrib contribution of, of wisdom, of knowledge, and understanding, and compassion. Uh, and, and the reason why I say that is, is that, is that because when we understand that I am a part of ministry, I, I'm a part of something that's greater than one part, that I'm a part of the body of Christ, and, and I am his workmanship, and, and that, that God has endowed me, that God has anointed me for a purpose, for a calling, for an assignment. And, and God thought it, he thought it so necessary. Hallelujah. He thought it so needful that he, he, he sent forth his spirit, he sent forth his anointing uh, to carry out the mission to carry out the assignment that he has given us. Because we know that God is not like a man. That, that in the sense that, that, that you know, he's, he's trying to make stuff up. That, that, that he's, 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 he's trying to figure stuff out. God is not trying to figure anything out. God has worked everything out from the beginning. So... With you being in the body of Christ, I want you to hear me. Uh, you being in the body of Christ, God has given you your plan, your assignment for you to carry out, and He has anointed you through His Spirit. Hallelujah. That's why the Holy Ghost is so important because God has given us a spirit, and He hasn't given us the spirit of fear. Uh, to, uh, and, but of love and, and, and of a sound mind. That's, that's what God has given unto us. Thank you, Lord, to carry out uh, the mission and the plan of Jesus Christ. My God, that's, that's what we ought to be focused on. That's what should be our mindset. When we come together as a family, I should love you. I should encourage you, I should strengthen you, but also I should serve you. And how do I serve you? I utilize the gifts. <laughs> Hallelujah. I utilize the gifts and the grace that God has endowed me with uh, so that I can, I can be beneficial 
in your life. If I see you hurting, if, if I would have hurt my foot, my hands would run to the rescue uh, and soothe it. Thank you, Lord, and help it. Hallelujah. If I needed to, I, my hands needed to go across the room uh, to do a task, my feet would stand up. Hallelujah. Receive strength and take me to where I needed to be so my hands could operate. Uh, and, that's, and that's how we should be as a body of Christ. together. This coronavirus is putting it in people's minds and their hearts. You know, uh, uh, well, um, because I'm not in the building, I can't carry out my assignment. That's not true. <laughs> uh, the building is Jesus. Hallelujah. And, and it's a spiritual building, a spiritual house. So if God has called you to, to be a missionary, still missionary. There's still people that need help. Hallelujah. Uh, uh, you don't need, uh, uh, I'm, I'm gonna, I gotta be careful when I say this. Thank you, Lord. Uh, the four walls is the building. You come to be indoctrinated. You come for fellowship. Uh, you come for the word of God. But the ministry takes place outside of these four walls. Uh, I'm sure you've heard of that concept before. My God. So just because the church doors uh, isn't open doesn't mean the body of Christ has shut down. <laughs> Hallelujah. Carry out your assignment. Show your love to your brothers or your sisters. Uh, if you see one in need, help them. Hallelujah. See about them. Encourage them. Strengthen them. My God. And, and do what is necessary. Uh, 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 you see that you're a part of a ministry. And you have been given assignment in your ministry. Work out your assignment. Don't fail the gate. Don't be a deserter. 
Hallelujah. Do what is necessary that God has given you to do. Hallelujah. My God. Hallelujah. I feel encouraged. My tonight. Hallelujah. And 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 leaders allow allow the members to operate. Allow them to do what is necessary that God has given them assignment to do. Then you'll have unity. Then you'll have power. Then you'll have joy. Hallelujah. My God. Uh, uh, that's it for tonight. Uh, let, we want to pray one for another. Thank you, Lord, that God will continue to strengthen us and give us what we need. A very simple message, but deep connotations. Very deep connotations. We talk about unity. Uh, unity comes when all members are operating in their gifts and their assignments. No unity will come without that. That's why the scripture says, Behold, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. Uh, uh, that word behold means, uh, wow, it's spectacular. It's very rare. My God, you, it's very rare to see members working together and everybody carrying out their particular assignment. My God. Hallelujah. But it can be done. It's God's expectation. Come on, let's just give God a praise. Let us give God a thank you. As we get ready to go on tonight, uh, let every heart pray. Gracious Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we certainly do thank you for this anointing. We thank you, Lord, for the power. We ask you, Lord, that you allow this word to find lodging in the hearts of thy great people. Strengthen us, Lord with all power and all might in the name of Jesus. And Lord, I thank you. Hallelujah. And Lord, well, I ask you, Lord, that you bless us on tonight. And Lord, you forgive me if I have fallen short of this word. And Lord, you forgive men, women, and children if they have fallen short of this word and of their assignment. And Lord, let us take another look. Hallelujah. Let us take another look. Hallelujah, at the word and, and what we're supposed to do. And Lord, let us be encouraged that you have given us the strength, that you have given us the grace to carry out ah, the will of God. Father, we thank you, we praise you, and give you glory and honor. In Jesus' name, the blood of Jesus, amen and amen. All right, God bless you. Uh, stay tuned for our service on, on, sun, on Sunday at 9 a.m., uh, our morning glory, and then our 11 a.m. service. Uh, let us come to be prepared. Uh, let us remember our giving uh, through tithely. Uh, uh, also, uh, let us remember our giving uh, through uh, bringing your tithes and offerings to the sanctuary or dropping them in our drop box or mailing them to Christian Ministries of the Apostolic Faith Church 501 West 31st Street. And if this uh, ministry has blessed you, you can also send in a free will offering. Thank you, Lord, uh, to bless the ministry. So we certainly do thank God for you. I thank God for this anointing. I thank God for the renewed fire that he's placed on the inside. Hallelujah. The Bible says, they that wait upon the Lord, they shall renew their strength. I thank God for you. Amen. And I'm going to do my best, amen, to do and to carry out the assignment that God has given me. I feel like uh, uh, King Solomon who said, Lord, uh, give me wisdom so I can know how to go in and out among your people. What a powerful prayer. And because Solomon prayed that prayer, it pleased God. God said, I'm not only going to give you wisdom, but I'm going to give you riches. Hallelujah. And Solomon at that time was the richest man that ever walked the face of the earth. Why? Because his ways pleased the Lord. Hallelujah. He wanted to, he wanted to serve God's people. And then my brother and sister, we ought to have that mind that we want to serve one another. Amen. So be encouraged. Stay encouraged. Walk with your God. Hold your head up high. Uh, fight the good fight of faith. In Jesus' name, amen.